Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to do another collaboration beer, and this one I think will be really quite interesting for a couple of different reasons. So this one is half Swedish on the home side, half German on the away side, and it's also a collaboration brew with a very well-respected Swedish-German restaurant in Stockholm's Old Town, actually, and it's a style of beer that I don't get to review all that often, so I'm very curious to see what this one has in in store for us. So for the Swedish side of things then, which as I said is the home side, we are going to go just to the south of Stockholm and we're revisiting a little place called Nynestham. So this beer is a collaboration between Nynestham Ongbruggeri to the south of Stockholm and Genstalabroi who come from Haverndorf, very close to Bamberg in northern Bavaria in Germany. The beer itself is called Zoom in Schwarz, it's a 5% Schwarz beer and this one like I said is brewed in collaboration with the Zoom Franziskan restaurant which you'll find in the old town of Stockholm actually so um, yeah it's an old restaurant as well it tells you on the label here that this restaurant has been around for 130 years which is pretty damn impressive so I think the next time I'm up in Stockholm I will need to go and check it out but this one like I say a 5% Schwarz beer which is a style that I, you know, I really quite enjoy these. There's the Schwarz beers, of course, from Germany, and there's the um, Tamavis that you get from the Czech Republic as well. The main difference being that the German ones are a little bit more kind of crisp, if you like, and the Czech ones are a bit more bready. But it's a style of beer that I do quite enjoy, but I don't get to review all that many of. Although, in fairness, I have noticed that there have been a good few of the Swedish breweries in recent times have been brewing like the likes of Schwarz beers, and some of them have been having a go at the black IPAs and things like that again. So there does seem to be a real kind of big appetite for black beer, if you like, in, uh, in Sweden too. So that's an interesting point to see when it comes to reviewing this one as well. So, um, yeah, very curious to see how this one turns out. And as always, I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer. Definitely cool to return to Nynesham's Ong Bruggeri after quite a while. And it's been even longer since I reviewed a beer from Genstala Bohoi as well. But my memories of Genstala Bohoi were that they produce some really awesome takes on the old German styles of beer, but they're also doing a lot of American stuff and things like that too. And Nunes Ham's own brewery, they like to do a lot of German and uh, English styles of beer here in Sweden too. So a very interesting combination of breweries here and definitely cool to try a beer that was brewed originally for the restaurant as well. So I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one. We'll need to see how we get on. So as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries involved here before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery websites the link to my other reviews that I've done from Linus Ham's own brewery and also Genstalabroi hopefully I can add more to both of those lists in the fairly near future it's more likely that you will see more Linus Ham's beers before you'll see the Genstala ones but we'll see about that I do my friend Daniel down in Bamberg I'm sure might be able to sort me out with some Genstala we'll need to see brewery that I definitely want to review more of though there's all the usual social media down there as well if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county prefetch or whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you and another one for all the German beers the Swedish one is added to pretty much all the time the German one is added to very regularly of course as well and and as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to the brewery notes then and we'll kick off with Nounis Hems Own Brewery because they are the home brewery in this case. So as I've mentioned to you already, Nounis Hems Own Brewery are based in Nounis Hem to the south of Stockholm and the company was founded back in 1997 and I think, if I remember correctly, these guys were actually the first Swedish craft brewery with the uh, with the Baderu Bitter, which was a very very kind of uh, you know it's a very kind of cult status beer that I reviewed that for you a number of years back. And um, but the brewery finds its origins in the Haggis Bears Club, which was an organisation started by some friends who just liked to go on expeditions around Europe to visit various different breweries. And the main reason for this was that Sweden was very lacking in choice of beer uh, uh, for a very long time. Although that is really not the case anymore. But in 1993, the club decided they needed 
needed a permanent venue for the club so we took an old warehouse and converted it into a pub and breakfast bar which proved to be very popular with people in the local area. The guys also began to brew after taking a home brewing course in Stockholm back in 1994 and apparently in the early 1990s there had been a small brewery in the town that used the name Neunissim's Ongbreggery so they decided to use this name again and uh, they name all of their beers after local places on the archipelago because they want these beers to be associated with that local um, Nounas Ham's own, uh, you know, that local Nounas Ham's area, if you like. But they had a small brewery that they largely built themselves initially, and in the spring of 1997, they launched their first beer, uh, which is now the flagship Bideru Bitter, at the Harbour Party in Nounas Ham. So a visit from Michael Jackson, also known as the Beer Hunter back in 2000, really inspired the brewery and they continued to brew despite the long hours and hard work and nearly everything at that point was done by hand. They were rewarded in 2002 with medals at the Stockholm Beer Festival and then a permanent spot in the Sea Stembo Lagat range as well. In 2006 the brewery moved into their current premises and they put a lot of work into uh, renovating this place and getting it sort of up to scratch. But they also finally managed to secure an automated bottling machine in 2009 and this meant that their very long working hours could finally stop and it would be a bit easier for them. Over the, 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 the years uh, after that, they basically started to brew lots of different types of beers and to release them through Sea Stimbolaget and as of 29, last, uh, 2019, last year, they produced around 900,000 litres of beer in that year and they've produced just over 100 different kinds of beer, according to Untapped. So, um, yeah, a really interesting journey for Nounas Hamzong Brewery. Um, I've tried a good few beers from these guys, you know, I think I've tried the Bootit Barley Wine, I've had a double IPA, uh, I think I've had an Imperial Stout from them at one point as well, to be honest, but it's been a while since I've reviewed anything from uh, from Nounas Hums Own Brewery, so um, yeah, it's definitely one that you need to check out if you uh, if you get the chance. These guys are a very uh, interesting brewery, and as I say, the first one in Sweden. So yeah, Bideru Bitter is one of the kind of classic Swedish craft beers that you really need to check out. It's actually very nice. I prefer it. It's it's like basically an American hopped English bitter, and I think it's a lot better than a number of the English brewed English bitters that I've had before. So um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about Nounissim's own brewery for just now. If you want to learn more, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow Follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to have a look at all of the different beers that they've done. So um, yeah, let's move to the German side of this beer then, so Genstallerbräu. So as I mentioned to you earlier, Genstallerbräu is located in the small village of Hallendorf in Franconia in northern Bavaria and in Germany. That's a very kind of famous region because it has the highest density of breweries per head of the population anywhere in the world. This municipality has a population of around 4,000 people and it's part of the Forchheim district which is about halfway between Bamberg to the north and Erlangen to the south and the closest big city there is Nuremberg or Nuremberg as you would say in English. But the Hallendorf municipality incorporates Hallendorf, Willersdorf, Schneid, Palzfeld, Schlammersdorf and Trialsdorf as well and I think it's actually Schneid that this brewery is, uh, is located in come to think of it. Um, but the brewery itself is, as I say, located in Schneid and it was founded by Andreas Genstaller back in 2011 and Andreas has apparently been brewing as a hobby since the age of 2015 and he'd previously been the managing director of one of the breweries in Bamberg and he later also led a brewery in the Steigerwald area before founding his own company back in 2011. So the brewery was in the, uh, was in the, old, bottling brewery, the old bottling building of Brauerei Friedel uh, who had produced beer in Schneid for a, a number of centuries actually but then they moved to a new facility in 2007 and then Andreas got a sort of permanent lease on this building back in 2011. They started off in this building with a production of 1500 hectolitres of beer per year and they were planning to up this to 5000 hectolitres per year over the coming while and I'm not sure if they've done that, I actually couldn't find any information on that but Andreas is a very very experimental brewer, he doesn't simply stick to the Franconian styles, there's American I PAs, stouts, doppel box, um, you know, he has Keller beers and, uh, and other things in there as well. So he's got a very extensive range of different beers actually. So this is one of the breweries, one of the kind of new wave German craft breweries that I would highly recommend that you check out. They do some very interesting stuff. I've reviewed the um, Schwarz uh, Neunzen, I think it was on the channel, which if I remember correctly, was I, that was a, it was either an Imperial Stout that or a an Imperial Black IP. I've got a feeling that it was actually a, an Imperial Stout. 
And I also reviewed the Zeugel beer for you a number of years ago because that came through the small partiers up here in Sweden and it's that was very, very nice actually. I'm sure that was a I think that was a Keller beer or a Zwickel, one of the two actually. But yeah, against Alaboy are one of the breweries that you definitely want to check out. They've got an exclusive distribution deal with Birotech in uh, in Bamberg, so you can order the beers through their website, actually, which is, is definitely worth doing. But as of March 2020, when I'm reviewing this beer for you, um, Genstalla Bogoy have produced around 80 different kinds of beer, and like I say, a lot of them are worth checking out. The one that I really want to try is the Rauch beer, which I tried to bring back from, uh, from Munich, a couple of years back, but unfortunately that was the one bottle in my suitcase that smashed in the uh, in the plane. That's the only beer I've ever lost on my travels. Actually, was the the Genstaler Rauch beer, and that was one of the ones that I was most looking forward to trying. Actually, so hopefully I can get a hold of that again at some point in the future. But yeah, two really interesting breweries involved in this beer: Nuenes Ham's own brewery, what the oldest craft brewery in Sweden, and Genstaler Boy, who are brewing some very interesting beers in a very historic beer producing area in Germany. So so um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about Genstaller Boy. If you want to learn more, you can check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And of course, you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about the different beers that they've done. So um, yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then. So as I mentioned to you already, this beer is um, it's basically a, a collaboration between the two breweries, but it was brewed originally for the... Um, for the Zoom Franziskaner restaurant up in Stockholm and that's definitely something that I will need to check out at some point in the uh, in the future you know it's I, I love my German food and things like that it says on the side here Zoom in el Zoom Franziskaner um, I'm guessing Zoom in is just like a nickname for this restaurant um, it was a it was a place that was found founded in the old star in the old town in Stockholm already in 1889. The theme is that it's a Swedish German uh, restaurant and uh, the thing that drives them has been that they want to what's it saying here? Um, they basically wanted to brew a, a good German beer for this brew for this restaurant and they put they pulled in their German colleague Andreas Genstaller and the result of this collaboration was a a uh, German Schwarz beer with brewed with six different malt types. Um, so it's a dark lager beer and it's brewed a little stronger and uh, after and it fits well with uh, it's it's it basically they're say, basically saying that it fits well with good food and things like that. And uh, like all of the beers, this one is unpasteurized and brewed with love and care. So uh, yeah, not a direct translation. There's a few words in there that are a bit beyond my Swedish vocabulary at the moment. But um, yeah, it looks very nice, this one. So as you can see, the artwork on this, you can see the, the entrance there to the Zoom Franziskaner restaurant. And you can see this is the Genstala Broy symbol. And there you can see the... Um, Neunesham's uh, Ongbreggery symbol too and that is of course on the bottle cap as well. When I actually got this beer I I, I don't know why but I, for some reason I thought it was Nerke Kultebreggery that had brewed this one. I think it was maybe because it was in the half litre because Nerke Kultebreggery tend to um, release their beers in the half litres whereas the Neunesham ones, a lot of the Neunesham ones I've had have been little 250 or 330 bottles come to think of it. So um, yeah this one is a 5% um, Schwarz beer so without further ado then let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting. So a collaboration Schwarz beer from uh, Neunesham's own brewery in Neunesham to the south of Stockholm. Again Stalaboy from Schneid near Hallendorf in Franconia in northern Bavaria in Germany and brewed in collaboration with the Zuma Franziskaner restaurant in Stockholm. So yeah, Schwarzbier, like I said, is basically a black lager. Um, so in Germany you have three, well four types of lagers actually. You've got the Helles, which is the blonde one, the Dunkel, which is the sort of caramelly brown one, and then you have the Schwarzbier, which is the big kind of roasty one. And of course you've got the different Czech derivatives of that as well. You've got the Svetli and the Letzak, which are the light coloured ones. I think it's, if I remember rightly, it is the Letzak that is the amber one. So one of them is one of them is blonde, one of them is amber. Then you have the Cherny, which is the equivalent of the Dunkel. 
and you have the um, you have the Tamavi, which is the equivalent of the Schwarz beer. But the Czech ones tend to be a bit more kind of bready than the German ones. I've always found that the German beers are just that little bit kind of crisper, if you like. But um, yeah, this looks very nice. As you can see, I've got my uh, Pilsner Urquell Stein out again for this one because the German Lager beer should be drunk in something like this because they are supposed to be sessionable. So um, yeah, this beer, um, if I hold this up to the light, it's got a lovely, very dark kind of ruby colour to it, but to you guys it's going to appear like quite a rosewoody, ebony sort of colour. You could see that the head on this one was about two thirds of a finger of a frothy, light, kind of beige, mocha coloured head almost. This is quite a nice looking him. If I sugar the beer up a little bit, you get more and more of that out of it. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, but I can see one or two smaller bubbles making their way up towards the bottom of the head there, but at 5% and as a Schwarz beer, this one is uh, is really pretty nice, I have to say, so I like how this uh, I like how this one looks actually, and this is a style, I used to enjoy this style quite a lot actually, but like I say, it's not one that you come across all that often, but if I had to pick out of the, um, the German Lagers, you know, obviously, I don't know, um, I, I enjoy a good Hellas, I don't drink the Schwarz beers as much, I love a Dunkel and you know the Doppelbot for me is just a little bit of heaven actually, but this beer looks very nice, so let's take a closer look at that aroma and see how we get on. Oh yeah, so straight away with this one, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's Munich malt in this, and you know when it comes from the... Um, when Genschnaller come from the Bamberg sort of region, the Franconia region, I'm pretty sure this one is going to have Weiermann malt in it from Bamberg. It's a very famous maltery that. Um, I'm pretty sure it will be Weiermann malt that, um, that they're using in here. So you can smell that lovely smooth German breadiness to the beer. It's probably, you know, there could be some Munich malt in here as well. So it's got a lovely kind of uh, bready smoothness to it. It comes across a little bit like... Um, it really comes across as having a bit of a smooth white bready quality there, but then you also get some really kind of roasty, toasty bread crusty notes. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a wee bit of caraffa or something like that in there. That's a vermin developed malt actually, which is, is beautiful, and it gives you these lovely kind of really toasty bread crusty flavours actually. So, um, yeah, the aroma on this beer is just absolutely uh, lovely and it's you know the German beers I've always found it's all about the smoothness and the drinkability which is uh, which is obviously a, it's a big big factor I love that about German beer but yeah some lovely kind of brown bready malts in there you can smell some of that toasty bread crusty quality there's a wee teeny little bit of a biscuity caramel note coming out of it for me you can pick up one or two sort of other grainy notes in there as well maybe there's just a little hint of a kind of woody quality to this beer as well so for me this one really is very, very nicely done, actually. It has pretty much everything you would expect of the Schwarz beer. It's not got the driest aroma that I've come across from this style before. It does seem to be really quite smooth and leaning a little bit towards the sweeter side of things in terms of its uh, its maltiness. I, I really like that about, about this beer. Um, in terms of the hoppy side of things, there's a little bit of earthiness there. And you know, it probably is Haller Tower Titnanger hops that are in this, um, or maybe something a bit more kind of fancy like Hercules or Peril, or probably you know probably not going to be Mandarina Bavaria or Haller Tower Blanc or anything like that. But yeah, it's probably one of the kind of classic um, German hops that's in this. It's got that lovely kind of smooth earthiness to it. You can pick up a little touch of the slightly bright floral quality and some lighter grassiness as well. But the fruity notes in this beer are also very interesting. I mean, for me, this one, it's got a little bit of a kind of juicy, kind of red fruity note to it, which is interesting. Um, a little touch of a kind of figgy note there, but there's a wee bit of a kind of grassy, citrusy quality to it. Um, lovely that, you know, there's a wee bit of a kind of black currenty, blackberry sort of thing that comes out later into the aftertaste as well. So I really like how that, um, how that all sort of goes together. Um, I mean this one, it's got everything, I think it's fair to say that this one pretty much has everything you would expect of the Schwarz beer, but I do find that it has a bit more of the kind of breadiness you might expect of, uh, of a Czech Tamavi, but it doesn't quite smell as thick as a Czech Tamavi in that sense. So um, yeah, that's 
probably uh, a good conclusion to it. And the thing you have to remember about the Schwarz beer and the Helles and the Dunkel as well is these beers are not, um, they're not designed to kind of blow the head off you in terms of, uh, of flavour and things like that. They are designed to be nice tasting but to be sessionable beers. It's not like you're drinking like a black IPA where it just has to you know, blow the head off you or a doppelbock or something like that. These are meant to be nice sessionable beers and I can tell just from the aroma of this it does have some very nice uh, complexities to it. Like I say, a lovely smooth bready note, a little bit of a roasty black malty quality. Some sweeter brown sugars in there as well and a few kind of woody nutty sort of elements. So I really like how this goes together. So um, yeah, let's have a taste of this one then and see how we get on. This one is the Zoom in Schwarz, a 5% Schwarz beer brewed at Neunesham's own brewery in Neunesham to the south of Stockholm in collaboration with Genstallerbräu from uh, Schneid near Hallendorf in Germany in, in Franconia, northern Bavaria and brewed for the Zoom Franziskaner restaurant in Stockholm. Let's get stuck in. Slange, skull, prost. Yeah, that's a nice beer that, I like this. As I say, I don't drink too many Schwarz beers and, you know, if it came down to it, I've had the choice out of the three German lagers, the Helles, the Dunkel and the Schwarz beer. You know, I probably, you know, Schwarz beer probably actually would be the one that I would choose last. I'd probably be, I'd probably be kind of torn between the, um, it would depend what mood I would be in, whether I would want a Dunkel or a Helles, but, you know, probably I would actually choose the Schwarz beer last out of the three. Um, and if it came down to the Schwarz beers as well, I'd probably be, I'd be more inclined, I've had the choice of a Czech or a German one, I probably would go for the more bready and smooth Czech one. Um, and that, that's the interesting thing, because this one it definitely has that more kind of crisp and dry quality that you would find from the German ones. This one really does have a nice little bit of a roasty bitterness to it, but I like it. And I'm not saying that I don't like the Schwarz beer style. Um, it's, as I say, it's just one that I've not maybe explored as much as I have with the, the Helles or the Dunkel actually. So um, so yeah, it's an interesting, of course it's Kostritzer that is the, the kind of go-to Schwarz beer when it comes down to it. And if they're done properly like this one, they are very, very nice. Um, of course you can check out my friend Peter over at the Clueless Drinker, um, I think he's reviewed a good few Schwarz beers as well. He and I are both big fans of the traditional German beers, um, so make sure you check out his channel as well. I should have said too that this beer was one that we got on the 13th of March 2020 through the Tilfelig Sortiment in Smop in, uh, in Seestenbolag here in Sweden. I forgot to say that earlier, but yeah, I will say this is a very nice um, Schwarz beer. This. I wouldn't hesitate to drink this again, I have to say, and probably I will have one of these when I do visit Zoom Franziskana in uh, Stockholm. But yeah, I really like that actually. So thumbs up to both Nounis Ham's own brewery and, uh, and Gainstaller Broy. But I'm not surprised. These guys, the, the two breweries know what they're doing. Um, you know, spe specialists in traditional beers actually. Or I shouldn't say that about Gainstaller. But yeah, let's try and break the um, flavour of this one down then. So straight away in this with this beer, you get a nice kind of roasty black malt just blanket in the middle of your palate. I do suspect that it's carafa that's in this, just from the way the flavours come out, because it's not quite as sharp and dark as you'd get from a straight up black malt. It's more of that kind of roasty toasty bread crusty sort of thing that comes out of this one. And you can really you feel that sitting there in the middle of your palate. So yeah, I really like how that, um, how all of that um, goes together. I mean, this one is really, it's really quite nice. It's, it's a, it starts off, I mean, in the aftertaste, it does get a little bit more roasty and dry, but it has the smoothness and things that you would expect. Uh, it has the, the smoothness of the things that you would expect from um, from a, a Schwarz beer, if you like. It's, it really leans more towards the kind of drier, crisper German side of things than it does the sort of Czech bready end of the spectrum. 
So yeah, like I say, a roasty, toasty black malt bank blanket in the middle of your tongue. Uh, on top of that, you start to get some of the kind of thicker bread crusty notes. If you go into the very centre of your palate, there is a wee bit of a sweet caramel there. And as you move out from, from the centre of your palate, you will get one or two sort of McVitie's digestive type biscuity flavours out of this beer, which is is quite nice actually. I like that about this one. Um, in terms of the the hoppy side of things, I mean there's not, if you go towards the back of the palate you definitely get a little bit of a, I think to go back to the malt base, I think there is a little bit of a Pilsner malt to this one because you can feel at the back of the palate it is quite crisp and if you go to the front corners of the palate and move in a wee bit you will get one or two little uh, woody undertones to this beer. There's maybe a little touch of a I don't know if there's a little teeny hint of a nutty quality to this one, but that would be very, very minimal. I would be kind of reaching with that sort of statement. But mainly this beer, it's you know, it's the carafa malts I think that kind of dominate the flavour here. So you have got that bready smoothness, but it does have a good bit of that kind of roasty toasty dryness to it actually. So yeah. This is really um, this is a really nice example of the Schwarz beer style actually. And it is the thing, when you have beers from Genstaller, um, they always have all the kind of flavours that you expect of the style when you have the German ones, but they're always just that little bit more kind of bold. I remember the Zeugel that I had, I think that was either supposed to be, I forget if it was a Keller beer or if it was a Land beer or, exactly, or a Zwickel, I forget exactly what it was. Something makes me want to say that it was a Zwickel, but um, you know the flavours and stuff that you got out of that beer, they were just so intense that it was great, and you really get that impression with this beer as well. You've got that the, the carafa malts and things just really come across very nicely in this one. So that's definitely the Genstaller uh, influence there. I mean, Neunis Ham's own brewery, their beers were always quite big and thick, from what I remember, and you can definitely feel that in this beer too. So you're sort of combining the two things that I like most about both the breweries here but the malt base in this they've got it pardon me pretty much spot on which is um which is exactly what you want with this with this beer so um yeah I like how this all goes together uh, in terms of the hoppy side of this beer back corners of the palate you've got a nice little bit of earthiness there as you come further forward along the side of the tongue you get a little bit more of a kind of floral aromaticity at the front corners of the palate then around the very front curve of the tongue it's a wee bit lighter and more uh, grassy then behind the front curve of the palate that's where you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer so for me this one, um, I do want. I've always wondered with um, the Schwarz beers, to be honest, because you know when it comes to you've got a very nice hop in Germany called Northern Brewer, and it's quite popular that it's used uh, that it's brew, that it's used to brew doppel box and things. So I've always wondered with the Chernies and the uh, oh, sorry, the, I've always wondered with the Schwarz beers the Doomcoast whether they use a little bit of Northern Brewer along with the sort of Hallertau, Mittelfru and uh, Titnanger and type hops and I do because you do get a little bit of fruitiness out of this one so I wouldn't be surprised if there's a wee bit of Northern Brewer in this along with like Hallertauer or Titnanger hops and um, but yeah you get a little bit of that earthiness in the back corners of the palate as you come further forward along the sides of the tongue it's a little bit br the, the earthiness does spread forward a little bit you get some nice floral aromaticity there then round the front curve of the tongue it's a little bit lighter and more grassy in my mind. I like how that, that hoppy side of things goes. The hops feel a little bit stronger in this one. There is a good degree of bitterness to this beer, but the fruity side of things is interesting in this one. So yeah, when you take the beer in, there's a good little bit of a, a juicy kind of fruity quality. For me, it's mainly a sort of figgy note with this one. You can feel a little bit of dry bitterness pushing its way out from the malt base the further you go into the aftertaste with this beer. But for me, there is a good bit of um, sort of figgy notes to the to the beer, and then the further you go into the aftertaste, the whole front kind of front tip of your palate is quite figgy. But then the further you go into the aftertaste, it leans a little bit more towards a black currant blackberry sort of thing, which is uh, is quite nice. And then the aftertaste, you get more of the carafa, the roasty toasty elements of the carafa, just pushing their way out actually. So I really like how that. Um, 
how that goes together. I mean, the, the combination of flavours in this beer is very, very nice, actually. And for a Schwarz beer, it really leans towards the German side of things, that more kind of roasty, toasty, crisp malt base, rather than the smoother, bready thing that you'd expect of a Czech Mavi, actually. So, um, yeah, awesome stuff, this. I wouldn't hesitate to drink this again, and like I say, I want to try one of these actually at the restaurant in, in Stockholm itself. So in terms of the mouthfeel, then, I would say that this beer is... Uh, Yeah, it's fairly light-bodied, this one. Carbonation does have a good degree of crispness to it. The mouthfeel overall is quite wet and it gets a bit drier the further you go into the aftertaste as well. Malt base has a little bit of sweetness to it, but quite smooth and quite dry the further you go into the aftertaste as well. Um, and I like how, I do like how that all, um, how that all goes together. Um, in terms of the hoppiness, I think we're talking maybe about 30-ish, maybe 40 IBUs with this beer. There is a good little bit of bitterness from the roasty black malts in this one, so I wouldn't be surprised if this beer is about 40 IBUs or something like that. Um, the malt base, like I say, quite smooth but quite dry later on. little touch of sweetness in the middle of the palate, and you've got a little touch of juicy... Uh, fruity sweetness to this beer as well, which is interesting. But overall, a very nice example of the style and definitely a cool Schwarz beer to review for you after a good while without having one of these. So, um, yeah, let's leave it at that. I hope you've enjoyed my take on this beer. Definitely a nice one to review for you here on the channel. Cool to return to both of these breweries after quite a while as well. But thank you again for watching my reviews. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section. But let me know what your favourite beers are, both from Nounisham's own brewery and from Genstalabroi and and uh, you will hopefully see more from them at some point in the future. Check out my social media, check out both of the breweries, have a go at this beer if you get the chance, and hopefully I can film a wee out and about video for you at uh, Zum Franzis in, uh, in Stockholm as well. I think now that I know there's a big German beer hall up there, it's a little bit of a kind of must do if you like. So yeah, thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon. This one was the Zoom and Schwarz, a collaboration between Neunisham's own brewery and Neunisham to the south of Stockholm and Genstadabloi from Hallerndorf near Bamberg in the Franconia, northern Bavaria in Germany, brewed for Zoom Franzis Kanner in Stockholm here in Sweden. Thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys later. Slange, Skoll, Prost.